Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Realm. Today we're going to do some more plane reviews. The first plane today is by Fireheart318. It is the fifth generation of the Splicer fighter jets. This one features an extra set of engines, which I don't know if that's the outside engines or the inside engines, probably the outside engines, which were missing from the first three generations and underused in the fourth generation, which was a general failure apparently. This one has an RTG to keep the lights powered, but if you don't want it or don't have it unlocked, you can obviously remove it or download the other variant. Apparently there's another variant. I'll go take a look at that. He also warns that the lower fins may be damaged on landing, which, considering how low they are to the ground, I would not be surprised if they were broken off. It's a very sharp plane. I like it. Go away, menu. All right. And the lights are on by default. Okay. Oh, hey, look. There's the same description in here. R for really, really fast afterburners. G for landing gear and landing lights. 1 to decrease, increase control and gimbal. Okay. Increased by default, wings will glow blue when low control is active. Maybe hard to see at high velocities. Oh, because you have little lights embedded in there, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah, you have little lights right here, and I'm guessing, yeah, they have blue. Haha, <laughs> that's great. Now, normally, of course, I like to launch during the daytime, but considering this thing has lights on board, I thought it would be interesting to see how it flies at night, to see it flying at night. Let's go ahead and disable the brakes. Hit R for really fast. There you go. And, uh, what action group was it? Was it one? Ah, yes. Blue, and we're in. I forget if blue was, like, hypersensitive mode or not. Let's see. If I turn it off, roll is like that. If I turn it on, roll is like that. Still about the same. And, yes, this is 1.0.5, as you might have noticed by the, oh, gosh, different GUI and stuff. Okay. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. I, I, I immediately forgot already like what the uh the difference was exactly in the different modes and which one means what exactly but uh oh yeah we have the uh internal stuff oh god wow yeah this is probably the hyper one then which is the blue which may be difficult to see at high speeds of course and yeah it's definitely a bit slower to do stupid crazy things like this so yeah there we go so it's supposed to be like an advanced super fighter definitely looks cool Definitely could have a lot of fun flying this, as long as I don't crash it into the ground, which uh, I almost did there. Yeah, I don't really have much more to say, and uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and hit R and G to turn on the landing... Ah, turn off the... Uh, whatchamacallits? Turn off the... Afterburners. Gosh, that took me way too long to remember how to say. And of course, deploy landing gear. We're going to see if I can land this without breaking those little winglets. Oh gosh, that thing is falling out of the sky. That was not a good landing. Not a good landing at all. Let's, uh, let's pretend that didn't happen by raising the landing gear. And what's the worst that could happen? That, obviously. Beautiful. Next up, by Bread Whistle, we have the Hummingbird FA Mark II, which is a stock aircraft. And it was designed to be a light boom and zoom attack fighter with... Oh, attack aircraft with fighter capabilities. Ugh, I misread that slightly. It includes a new innovative takeoff sled to help it get into the air. Weapons sold separately. Oh, so... Oh, you detach that once you're in the air. Wait a second. You detach that the moment you start going. Okay. Yeah, sure. That, that seems perfectly safe and reasonable. What are these? Are those monoprop just hid in the back there? Or what? What? Oh no, those are the tail end of the tail connectors. Okay, interesting. All right, here goes. Oh dear. The, <laughs> I forgot that that rocket sled would break off immediately. That's kind of scary. The, it's kind of scary going down the runway knowing you're not actually on the thing that you're on. Oh dear, and I've broken the wing off. Yeah. I don't think it's meant to be landed again. Oh, nope, never mind. It does have, it does have landing gear. Okay. Okay, so it's like, uh, it is reusable. It just has a rocket sled to take off the first time. All right. Wow. I like the tailplane design. Very cool. Let's try a proper flight. All right. Here goes. Oh, God. I forgot again immediately. That is terrifying. That is terrifying every single time. All right. I guess I'm just going to wait till, oh, God, it, it acted like it was going to fall off. And I did the exact same thing again. I am good at flying these, honest. Man, oh, what? I didn't even landing gear. Okay, there we go. Landing gear deploying, dropping onto the ground fairly hard. Yeah, I was pretty sure that was about to happen. Whee! And slide to a stop. Very nice. Let's try that one more time. Okay, 
A much more reasonable takeoff this time, please. I would like things to go well. Okay, I think we're at a reasonable speed. I'm going to pull up just gently, gently, gently pulling up. Oh, dear. The rocket sled is flying. The rocket sled is flying. And now it's crashing. All right, beautiful. So, we're ready to deploy landing gear should we need to. And we're off, finally, in the air, successfully, for once. Very nice. Ooh, I do like this. I like this. Clips a little. I don't like that. But I do like it overall. I like the shape of it, the general look of it. Very nice. Very. It's a tiny, elegant little thing. Definitely fun to fly. Fun to take off. Fun to fail at taking off with it. Gosh. The number of tries. I mean, I got on the third try. But uh, still, the number of times it took me to take off with this thing is a bit ridiculous. But... Ah, yeah. Beautiful. Whoops. Turn, pitch, roll. <laughs> very, very high angle of attack capable. Oh, man. I'm just looking at the shadow right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, dear. Pointing down. Pointing down. Not good. All right. There we go. Gonna go ahead and reduce the thrust pull a way too sharp turn this thing can just turn on a moment's notice I mean it can pull up on a moment's notice it doesn't turn so quickly but it pulls up quite quickly let's uh, throttle up just a bit all right flare at the last moment and drop down and there we go I hit the wrong button everything's fine air brakes oh cool I didn't even notice that overall I very much like it. A little hard to control. It doesn't roll too well at low speeds, or uh, maybe at high speeds as well. Actually, let me test that. Let's let's go ahead and take off again and uh, try rolling at a high speed and see how that goes. That said, I see why it had a takeoff sled because it's uh, that rear landing gear is uh, so far back that you can't really uh, take off on its own. Perhaps when I hit that hill up ahead, um, it won't break and it will take off. But uh, don't know just yet. Yeah, there we go. Wow. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, the uh, damage mod thing is saying that I'm running out of fuel. But um, that's only on that back part, so that's okay. So let's see. Okay, we're at a relatively low speed. Yeah. Not very good at roll. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, time warp a bit so we can get some speed up. And let's try rolling now. Yeah, it rolls quite well at a high speed. But once you start to lose that speed, it's uh, bad. But, then again, I don't think this is really designed to do uh, low speed stuff. It's designed to kind of get in there, get out quick. I mean, generally fighters work better at higher speeds anyhow, so yeah, that makes sense. I like it very much. Thank you. Next up by Jaywalk, we have, oh my god, C7, C310, Starlifter 2, R2. Holy shit. That's, my computer's gonna melt right now, isn't it? Crew 5, multi-role transport, 227 parts, 79 tons, height and width and length and stuff, and then it's got, wait, whoa. Oh man, all of these things, LaRops capability. What is LaRops? I'll have to look that up. Speed brakes, air brakes, in-flight refueling receptacle. Like, it can refuel in-flight, or it can refuel other things in-flight. Oh gosh, I can't look at the back of it. There you go. Oh, wow. Ah, it stands for Long Range Operations. That's what the LROPS is for. Alright. Wow. Will this thing... F I mean, obviously it will fly, or it wouldn't be here, or at least it should fly, but, uh, geez, wow. This is crazy. Wait, wait. Okay, what's going on here? We got those two engines, we got parachutes, and we got these two engines and some other two engines? What are these two engines? There's two little, like, tiny jets in here? What? What is the point of those? I mean, I guess it's like a takeoff assist system? Oh, I don't know. Juno engines in there. Okay. But why do we have... What are the parachutes? Where are they? Why do we have parachutes firing during our takeoff sequence? Okay, on the back. Alright. I don't see why, but we'll give it a try. Oh my god. Wow. Holy shit. When that thing loaded in, did it load in? Oh my god. That's insane. Alright, well, I'm gonna try and fly it. I'm not gonna do any kind of 
voiceover. I'm just going to speed up this footage so you can see it flying or not flying as the case may be. This, this is not going to go well. Yeah, again, I don't see why we have those on the back like that. So the monstrosity can fly. I don't know what else to say about it, though, other than it's a monstrosity, and that I want to try this in 1.1. Also, watch the aerodynamics take the belly of the plane. See how it curves up when you pull up? That's the aerodynamics. That's so great. Alright, so a plane this big, you have to risk crashing it into the ground in spectacular fashion and uh, crashing the game potentially, but you just have to with a plane this big. Next up and last for this episode is an SU-34 by Drake Kerman. It apparently works exactly as expected from the real plane, with the exception of its top speed. Alright, looks cool. Has a definitely accurate cockpit, unless I'm misremembering what a flanker is. And, uh, and the cockpit may be different. No, this is... I'm pretty sure I, I'm recognizing what this is supposed to be, and I'm pretty sure this is fairly accurate. Uh... You know, there are some little inaccuracies that have to be taken in order to make it fit in with KSP, but uh, overall I think it's uh, reasonable. It's got a lot of decouplers firing on the first stage, though. That's uh, that's interesting. I, I don't know if that's intentional. What are these? Yeah, it's just little decouplers. I don't get it. Alright, well, let's give it a try. Alright, here goes nothing. Oh yeah, I forgot that those would uh, detach when I launched it. Yes. Wow. Oh, and it's using the, um, whatchamacallit, the turbojets, so it has this, uh, those pretty blue flames. Oh, I haven't seen those in a while. I have not seen those in a while. That is cool. Alright. Well, let's go. Oh my god. Giant, giant, uh, whatchamacallit, lifting surfaces. Yes, uh, control surfaces, that is the word. Making the landing gear actually splay outwards with their force. That is, um... That's why I'm actually pitching down a little bit right now, is because I don't want the landing gear splaying out and causing me to crash before I even take off. So there we go, I'm just letting it kind of build up speed. Just letting it build up speed, and now I'll go ahead and try and do a little bit of uh, lifting off. There we go, lifting off quite comfortably. I say quite comfortably, but it was kind of uh, pretty close to being crazy there. We have an air brake that is active for pitch and yaw down here. If I hit B, we'll see it uh, rise above the surface. How much? About that much? No? Yeah, about that much. Okay, yep. And, uh, rather slow, but, uh, like you said, I guess he said accurate except for top speed. It, the real thing could probably definitely go faster. Quite a bit faster, in fact. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Alright, well, let's do some maneuvers with it. Pulling up. Ooh, very nice. They're very smooth to fly this. You know, it's a bit slower, unfortunately, but it is a very smooth plane to fly. It controls quite nicely. Definitely enjoying that. I'm thinking about uh, taking this and putting it in 1.1 as well. In fact, I think I'll go ahead and uh, stop KSP 1.0.5 after this and go check out... No, I'm not going to put my landing gear down right now. No, I'm not going to crash. I, uh, I'll... I'll Go ahead and try this and that other massive thing. Oh god, in KSP 1.1, the preview build, of course, right now, uh, before continuing on, well, exiting this video and continuing on with something else later on. But yeah, definitely fun to fly this. Uh, other than the frame rate, which is, of course, why I want to try it in 1.1. Miss the building narrowly. Yeah. Let's just crunch this into the ground, yeah? Oops, I accidentally lifted up. Ah, uh, damn. There we go, that's better. A 
I'm surprised we didn't blow up the engines in doing that. That's crazy. Wow. And so a, a large part of it remained intact, too. That's pretty cool. Man, I got two debris fields from this. All right, so here we are in 1.1 with the buggy textures. Oh, this, you know what? I need to go delete the stock craft. Or actually, I'll just modify this save file to make them inaccessible later on. But for now, so you know how this, like, tanked 1.0.5 and now it's running smooth? Also, this, um, this claim to have 200 and something parts, it has 318. I'm gonna remove these parachutes from the staging order here, or at least move them out of the way. Because I'm pretty sure they shouldn't have been the way they were. Alright. Here goes. Wow, this thing is... Oh yeah, I forgot. It's very, very loud when you do that in KSP 1.1. Because they haven't fixed that yet. Oh well. They will sometime. Soon. Hopefully. I hope. I hope. This is... What is this? Preview build? Uh, I can't read it because it's on... It's gray on gray. It's 1196. I think that's the same one I was using uh, a couple days ago. Yeah, uh, yep. So... Definitely. Look at this. It runs smooth. Look at that. I mean, the time is a bit slow. Wow, because it's... Oh my god, this thing's gonna crash. It's wagging on the... Yeah, it's gonna... Look at that, though. It's so smooth. I don't have to speed this up in post. It's just disintegrating on its own. Beautiful. That's gonna blow. Yep. Beautiful. Yes. Alright, let's try this one more time. I just broke the tail cone off by speeding it up and broke two engines. Off. Oh my god, that's great. I time warped with this. That was a mistake. Oh my god, we're gonna have a waggly fish plane on the runway with two engines on one side and half a wing missing on the other side. This can only go well as the front continues to turn to the side on its own. Come on. Don't, don't go completely insane. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. You misguided snake of a plane and there we go everything explodes beautiful there's a piece still trying to escape over there all right i do actually want to see this monstrosity fly so i'm going to modify it with uh, some temporary struts to get it in the air and then i'll blow the struts once we get into the air so i'm just going to come along the top here and i'm just going to place several of these decouplers those might be placed too far might be placed too far apart but i'm not going to worry about that just yet all right uh let's just set them there and let's set another one another one here yeah okay so we have several decouplers actually let's just put another one here because there we have and you know one more back here kind of things running better this one's gonna just go up just grab this and actually just grab this and move along all right here's the one here it is and here's the one okay on this two here yeah okay now we need to strut the hell out of it right so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair of struts to the cockpit. We're going to take another... Where's the strut? I was holding it a moment ago. It's all the way up there. Okay. We're going to take another set of struts to here. Another set to here. A set from this to there. Okay. Strut from here to here. We're essentially giving it another backbone. So you can see here. A lot more parts, but uh, considering this is 1.1 and 1.1 runs so much better, like it, it runs a little slower, like it has to slow down time in order to keep up, but it doesn't like completely lag out the frame rate, which is very nice. So, oops, that did not place. Okay. Oh. All right. So let's take two of these, put them here. All right. Nearly done. Nearly done. Going to take and put a little extra. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave them there because I don't care that much about the parts. All right, so nice to not have to worry so much about the parts. All right, so we got, looks like a pretty good arrangement of struts, except for the wings. I haven't done the wings yet. That's okay, though. What we'll do is we'll have one set going to there, another set going to there, this going from here to there, and from there to here. And we'll go ahead and have another set of these. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Nope. That is... that? Okay. Okay, let's have it, like, right there. Yep, there we go. We'll have another one, another set of these coming off of here. Okay, beautiful. We'll have some struts connecting those. Some struts connecting that to there. And some struts connecting this to... He fuck it, to the engine. Oh, it didn't quite connect. Oh well, whatever. So we've given this thing like a strengthening backbone along the top. 
And we're going to move these engines down to... Okay, I can't select all the engines at once for some reason, because KSP 1.1 is still in development and still has issues. But here we go, we have a whole bunch of struts holding everything together, and we can detach it mid-flight. It's on top of the plane, so it should be comedic when it detaches in mid-flight, because pieces will be sliding and falling off and possibly taking out winglets with them. But in any case, that's definitely what we're going to do. I also want to just... These these parachutes are... They're, no, just no. Okay? Just no. There we go. All right, and I'm going to save this as modified and parts. Oh, oh, wow. There's like a whole other page hidden down there. I didn't see that. Wow. There's a lot of stuff in there. I'm just going to come down here and say parts like a billion. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Fuck. There we go. All right. So save that. Let's give it a launch. All right. Physics kicking in. Still, still falling a little bit on the front. But shit, I accidentally broke the back. All right, here goes. Not hitting space a second time because I don't want to fuck that up again. And as you can see, this thing just kind of bends down quite crazily. Even even with the the structural support we just added, it still bends quite a bit. So yeah, I think uh, the biggest challenge is actually going to be turning. Because see, it, it wants to turn. Oh dear, it it wants to turn on its own. And it's going to take us right into a thing. Oh, come on. No, get off the ground. Get off the ground. Wobble to freedom. That sort of helped, but also didn't. Oh, we might survive this. No, we're not surviving this. Beautiful. Man, I can't wait for Kerbal Crash System to be updated for 1.1. It may be already. So since this whole thing can't fly straight, I'm essentially going to... Nope, not that way. Okay. Okay, I can't figure it out. That way tilts it that way. That way tilts it... Okay, yeah. That way. Just gonna click. And I'm gonna save this again as modified 2 in case it breaks horribly somehow. And see, we're gonna take off facing sideways. Because this thing can't keep straight. In fact, I'm gonna turn off the SAS. And hope for the best. Oh dear. That feels like that's gonna smash the tail immediately. Something else fell off. What the fuck? Half of one of our wings fell off. Fuck it, we're going anyhow. Let's accelerate. Faster and faster. This thing's not getting into the air. It's too wobbly. Like, I fixed the, um... I, I, I helped it a little bit with giving it that backbone, but it needs, like, side bones. Um, someone remind me to come back to this, though, because I'm taking far too long and I need to go do something else now. So, uh, oh dear. Wow. Look at this piece. The tail, still flying, still alive. Brilliant. Alright, I'm gonna fly that SU-34 in here. But after this, I am done for the day. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space. The fuck?